Hey, March 1st at 1.19 a.m. Central Standard Time, National Weather Service is saying that this whole area in the United States is under tornado watch. And let's look and see what that looks like on the radar. Okay, radar at College of DuPage. All these red coming up here. Those are, that's intense stuff happening. And once again, I want to point out, let's unzoom this. Look at all this radar on down here. You can just go up here and zoom in. Look at these weird lines. A lot of strange lines just showing up on this radar. See that line right there, and that line right in there. Okay, let's look at another map. This is an telecast, and these red upside down triangles are possible tornadoes. Right on here now, there's three showing. This yellow is possible damaging winds. I hope everyone there is safe. These are strong cells. central United States. The blue is hail. And you can click on to find out the temperature differences in the 60s and 70s here and right behind it is coming this cold front. So that's going to cause a problem. Let's uh, get rid of that and let's also get rid of all that stuff showing. And let's just look at the clouds. Look at this cloud over here. Looks like an alligator is going to bite something. <laughs> a little it's got a little tiny tail. But this is... This is the time of year, although it does happen in January too. When we all need to look and see what we can figure out to make sure we have shelter if something like this is happening. Without the clouds on here, you can see a little bit better where these systems are. And the cool thing about it on here is that if it's coming at you, each one of these lines is five minutes. Let's say, for example, if this activity is happening, and you're right here, you can figure 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes at least is what you have to move out of there. Get in your car and drive. Or get into your basement. We'll have a little bit more. Okay, this is the College of DuPage infrared satellite for the Northern Hemisphere. And I'm just going to say that this is what I believe is part of the issue. Okay, we're going to go back. I don't know if you noticed. That line at 2045. Go back one more because I thought there was another one. Okay, well let's let it play again, but slower. That right line, right, that goes right into there, I think is um, a shadow of energy that's injected into the atmosphere, which will affect um, all the atoms in the atmosphere, and so it, it changes the weather, in my opinion is what I've seen. It can intensify it or it can make it diminish. And there's a lot of other circumstances that are involved in creating the weather besides just that. Let's go back. Okay, 
sides with that. Well, of course, if you're going to put energy into the atmosphere that comes around into here, and that's moving up that way, that's going to affect it. Um, right where right in here also we can put those clouds on there now the funny thing the funny thing about radar and the maps is that not everything shows up the same on every website so you kind of have to dig and look at different people's information and like look and see what looks unusual to you <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know why I just did that. I was up here. I'm on the RSOE feed. And you can see these tornado symbols here. And if you go down on here, this is the cool thing. March 1st, extreme weather, USA, West Virginia. Tornado in the state of Illinois. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Tornado. Um, state of Missouri three hours ago, but of course it looks like there's more now again um, And then if you click on this little eyeball thing you can go into um, a summary and a description One person was killed in Ottawa and emergency crews are looking for people trapped in rubble in the neighboring town of Napolet on the wake of a string of severe late winter storms that raked across southern uh, northern Illinois. This is an article in the Chicago Tribune. One dead as tornado hits Ottawa. Watch extended to 4 a.m. in Cook and 42 other counties. And right now it is not 4 a.m. in that area. Okay, so it really doesn't matter if a tornado is man-made or if it's natural when it's coming at you. The important thing is how do you keep yourself safe? Here on this website, which the link will be below, there's quite a bit of information that's just printed. Um, it's not, there's no pictures, but um, it says have a family tornado plan in place. And here, this is very interesting, um, know the signs of a tornado. Obviously, besides an obviously visible tornado, here are some things to look and listen for. One, strong persistent rotation in cloud base. Yes, it does happen when it's daylight. Two, whirling dust or debris on the ground under a cloud base. Tornadoes sometimes have no funnel. Three, hail or heavy rain followed by either dead calm or fast intense wind shift. Many tornadoes are ra wrapped in heavy participation and can't be seen. 4. Day or night, loud continuous roar or rumble, which doesn't fade in a few seconds like thunder. 5. Night, um, at night, small bright blue-green to white flashes at ground level near a thunderstorm as opposed to silvery lightning up in the clouds. These mean power lines are being snapped by the very strong winds, maybe a, maybe a tornado. 6. Night, time. Persistent lowering from cloud base, illuminated or silhouetted, 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 <laughs> excuse me, by lightning, especially if it's not, if it is on the ground, or if there's blue-green white power flash underneath. And then what to do. Now this one thing about the sound that doesn't go away with a thunderstorm that over recent years, thunderstorm, thunders have been going on and on sounding kind of like a tornado. What to do if you're in a house with a basement, avoid windows. I thought this was a really important um, piece of information right here. Know where very heavy heavy objects rest on the floor above, pianos, refrigerators, etc. And do not go underneath them. They may fall down through a weakened floor and crush you. Head protection, such as helmet, can boost survivability also. In a house with no basement, avoid windows, go to the lowest floor, small center room like a bathroom or closet, under a stairwell, um, cover yourself with a mattress or something heavy, and then they say here, helmet also, 
in an office building they tell you where to go in a mobile home get out even if your home is tied down and it is not as safe as underground shelter or permanent sturdy buildings go to one of those shelters I don't understand how there can be uh, mobile home parks with no area like that at school follow the drill go to the interior wall or a windowless room all this information is down here and you can read it you can find it out yourself the link will be below in the open outdoors if possible seek shelter in a sturdy building if not lie flat and face down on low ground protecting the back of your head with your arms get as far away from trees and cars as you can they may be blown onto you in a tornado in a shopping mall now this always seems to me like not a good place to be if there's a tornado do not panic watch for others move as quickly as possible to an interior bathroom storage room or other small closet area away from windows and in a church or theater once again do not panic and it's basically the same thing even get under the seats or pews protecting your head with arms and hands and then they tell you what to do after a tornado and this is something really important here after a tornado do not use matches or lighters in case of leaking natural gas pipes or fuel tanks stay away from power lines and puddles with wires in them they may still be carrying electricity people have died just from that not even getting killed in the tornado here's something that's very important what if I'm in my car many people believe that a highway overpass can provide safety from a tornado when in fact an overpass may be the worst place to hide to seek shelter <clears throat> Tornado winds can exceed 200 miles per hour, producing airborne debris that are blown into and channeled under the overpass where people might try to seek shelter. Debris of varying size and types, including dirt, sand, and rocks, moving at incredible speeds, can easily penetrate clothing and skin, causing serious injuries and possible, possibly death. Very fine debris can also be forced into the eyes, causing injury or loss of sight. A person can even be blown out or carried away from the overpass by the fierce tornado winds. So um, this says that the safest course of action is to get out of the tornado's path and seek t shelter in a sturdy, well-constructed um, building. But I've heard this. Lie flat in a ditch or ravine and clasp your hands behind your head to protect yourself. And I'm also going to put this link on here, Weather Safety, Ohio gov Government. And then there really is just a lot of information on the internet. I just typed in what to do if a tornado strikes. And you can see this picture of this guy in the bathtub. And here's a man with a some kind of piece of wood sticking right through the wall. People lined up against the inside of a wall here and here. It's a good idea to pay attention to this kind of stuff and be safe. This is wiki how to do anything, how to survive a tornado. Now we have the link below and they have good pictures here about getting into the basement or underground shelter. This, if you're in a building, this is not a good idea to be up there. And they tell you where not to be. Watch the weather. Remain in shelter, they say. Watch out for electrical cords outside <clears throat> and inside. If you're in the open, where to go. Um, if you're in your car. Drive, if possible, to the nearest shelter. If you're in your car this is a good way to protect yourself but usually there's more than one person in a car this is about being in the ravine not being in the underpass my time's almost up here so if you're in a boat or in the open water and how to prepare for a tornado I've got the link below 
I'm grateful for you, and I am here at your service.